And in the story of Jonah, you're going to see disobedience. You're going to see the grace of God. You're going to see obedience. You're going to see so many things in this in this story of Jonah. And so, Father, I right now I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would just help this teacher as she comes out and just tries to explain the things that you have given to me. Let me step aside, Holy Spirit, and you come in and you do your work. In Jesus' name, in Jesus amen. Name. Amen. 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 How, how many of you remember the story of Jonah? Yes. yes. And I want you to get the full impact okay. of what God is trying to show us in, the, in, this, in this story here. I mean, it's real simple. It's nothing hard or anything like that. It's just that God loves an obedient person, and He is full of grace, and He is a God of a second chance. Amen. And that's what we're going to see in the story about Jonah. So if you go, go turn with me to Jonah, the first chapter, and I'm going to start in the first, uh, first verse. Okay. Is everybody there? And Jonah? And I liked what Sister here said. God spoke to Jonah. Yes. It wasn't a man. It wasn't anybody else. But God spoke to him. And he said, now listen, Jonah, I want you to do something for me. So in fact, God gave Jonah a job, right? Mm -hmm. And we're going to get into that. And we're going to see how, um, oops, I don't know where is it, how um, uh, Jonah responds in the first part of this lesson. And he says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, <coughs> saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> that great city, and cry <coughs> against it. For their wickedness is come up before me. Okay, so I'm going to stop right there. And I'm going to say, and we've already said, Now the word of the Lord come unto Jonah, now, what, does that, what is that saying to you guys? The word of the Lord coming to Jonah. What is that saying to you? What is that? Who's speaking to Jonah? Oh, God. The Lord. God. The Lord. Okay, don't be afraid to answer. Yes. The Lord is speaking to Jonah. Have you ever had God speak to you? Yes. Have you ever heard it in a still, small voice? Or have you heard the word of God in, in your Bible? And God will tell you. Maybe God's speaking to you to do something and you'll yeah. go to the Bible and you'll say, oh my goodness, I think God has already, he spoke to me that. That's just evidence God is speaking to you. Mm -hmm. So it was God that told Jonah, I want you to do this for me. Mm -hmm. So he said, arise. What does that mean, church? Get up. Get up. Get up, get up. Get up he said. Now, I think <coughs> Jonah was a minor prophet and God's telling him, now I want you, I don't know what Jonah was doing. I don't know if he had stopped um, um, doing what God wanted. I don't know anything about that because there's not a whole lot about Jonah. But I do know that he served the Lord Jesus Christ. He served him. And I know he did that. So God said, now I want you to arise. And that's what God is speaking to our church today. Amen. I want you to arise. Okay, we're going to get on into that later on. So arise means to what? Get up. Yeah. Don't stay sitting where you are. Don't stay in the places where you feel comfortable. Arise. Now he may have had a lot of um, <coughs> reasons when we get on down here why he didn't want to go to Nineveh, and we're going to discuss some of those. But he said, arise and go to Nineveh. <coughs> it's a great city, meaning probably a lot of people there, right? Nineveh was the capital of the mighty Assyrian Empire. That's down in the, the book that I've got, the King James, that's down in the, the commentary here. So it's a great city. And cry against it. What does that mean to you? Come on, somebody tell me. Somebody help me out here. I need some input here. I want to know what you think about what the Word of God is saying here. Cry against it. Preach. Call out. Pray. Call out and pray. Pray, mm -hmm. pray for that city. To warn people of their Warns. sins. To warn people of their sins. Yes. Yes. That's what God is asking Jonah to do. Go into this city. Arise. Get up. Now you have rested long enough. Okay. 
Now maybe God will give us a rest period and we're able to rest. But now he says, arise and get up because it's time that you go to this city that is full of great sin. Now we're not all called to go to a city, but we are called to go to the people in the world that we know or that we encounter once in a while to do what? Preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as we go down here, we're gonna find out that's why God sent him to Nineveh. He we, wanted him to go there to that great city. We should pray every day, God, let someone cross my path. Yes. That I can help and I can bless. Yes. And, yes. and because when you bless them, they bless you. Yes, yeah. that's right. Yes. And what does it say? We and tell them of the judgment to come. And cry against cry it. Cry against it. Mm -hmm. Cry against it. That means go and tell that city what's going to happen if they don't come and return to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we have to have a balance in our life when we speak to people. We have to show the love of Jesus Christ. But we also, with love and care of that person, we have to show them the judgment of the Lord Jesus Christ too. And the judgment is not a good thing, as you're going to see later on in this story. don't know that I'll get to it today. My main thing today is that we're going to look at Jonah and the disobedience that Jonah was doing. Now he was a man of God. He loved the Lord. And now God's telling him, now Jonah, I want you to arise and I want you to go to that great city of Nineveh because their sin, what's it say? For their wickedness is come up before me. So God is noticing this. Now sometimes we need to take notice of something. Amen? Do we overlook a lot of things? Yes. To, because we're too quick to say, ah, oh, that's okay, that's okay. Now we're talking about me. I'm talking about me. Now, I'm not judging anybody else, okay? I'm talking about me. For the wickedness is come up before me. I see the wickedness in this city. I see, and I'm not telling anyone you're wicked, okay? I'm just, <laughs> we're talking about Jonah here, okay? And we're learning a lesson here about Jonah, okay? And the city, because they were full of wickedness, did not mean that God did not love them. Did you know that? That's right, right. right. Did you know that God will warn us? He gives us warnings. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you, Brenda, that. This is what I don't want you to do. I'm warning you not to do this. If you're disobedient with me, then this could happen. Okay, now we're speaking truth, okay? I'm not telling a lie here. God wants us to be obedient with him and do what he has asked us to do. And sometimes in our life, we get tired and we make excuses and we don't want to do it because we're out of our comfort zone. Now. Let's be honest today, because God wants to free us from some of those things that we hold inside of us. That's right. That's right. Okay? That's right. Now he says, Jonah, arise and go to that great city. It's just full of sin. And the wickedness has cried out to me. And I'm hearing them. See? I'm hearing them. I'm hearing the wickedness. God is now hearing everything that is going on in this world today. We may stop and think, doesn't he know what's happening? Doesn't he know? Doesn't God know that I, I'm, I'm so tired? Doesn't God know that, uh, uh, what, that, that people hurt the little children? Doesn't God know all of that? And why <coughs> does it happen? And that answer I can only give you is that God knows what's going on. Right. God is in complete control of everything that's yes. happening in this world. Yes. The devil will never take hand, take hand over Jesus Christ because he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings and he is going to rule this earth. Yes. Amen. 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 So we can't ever, ever think that the devil is gonna is ruling in our lives because he isn't. Okay, um, if I get off a little bit, that's okay. We'll get back on because yeah. the Lord has showed me an awful lot of things. We think, <coughs> okay, I'm going to get back to this verse. Arise and go to Nineveh. Okay. 
and you're going to see on down here, I'm going to read it in the third verse. But Jonah rose up. Oh, he did get up. That's more than some of us do, right? <laughs> he did get up. But what did he do? He flee. He fleed. Man, he fleed. Yeah, he fleed. Why? Okay. Why did he do this? What's tarnish? Why? What's tarnish? Is it a is a city? Yes. It's a city. Mm -hmm. He fleed. Because he flees tarnish. He fleed from God. He was going away from God. Trying to run from God. Okay, that's what he's doing. He's actually running for God. But he did get up. But what Jonah did was he went in the wrong direction. Okay, how many of us have done that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get up. God will tell you to get up because I want you to do something. And we will have so many excuses. Put it off. Why we can't do it. Okay, so I'm going to go to my notes here real quick. Jonah was given a job to do. We, as a church, have been given a job to do. Come on, who can agree with me? That's yeah. right. I, I want to hear it better than yes. that. Yes, amen. I want to know that you know that God has given you a job. We're yes, here. we're here for a purpose. <coughs> and, and, um, and I like that. How many people say, why am I here? We've got a purpose in our life. Yes. God saved your soul for a purpose. Yes. Not yes. just to sit on some place and not get up and do anything. Yes. And I'm not saying that all of us are televangel. All of us get out there and preach to a thousand people. Or all of us get out there and and preach to, in the biggest the church the biggest churches in the world. And I'm so glad that we have this place right here. Amen. Where. These people right here yes. love God. Yes. Man, and that's another thing I'm going to preach on, but not today. Mm -hmm. So anyway, Jonah was given a job to do, not by man, but by the Holy Spirit. Amen. God spoke to him. <coughs> what did Jonah do? My first note here was he rebelled. Mm -hmm. He rebelled because it says Jonah rose up to flee and to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Right. Okay, let's be really truthful. How many of us have done that? I have some truthful people out there. We have fleed from the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I know for many years God called me. I knew that. I knew from the time I was 12 years old that God had called me to do something. Mm -hmm. That God had called me into this His kingdom to do something for him. But I rebelled for so many years. And I ran from God and I ran from him. And I am so sorry that I did. But I really had no one to lead and guide me. Uh, really no one to say, uh, my Aunt Anna took me to church a lot. That's why I even know about church because Aunt Anna took me. In later years, our mother come back to the Lord and we went to church with her. But I knew back then that God had called me to do something great in this world. And I'm not saying I'm a great person. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying I knew God called me to, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I ran. I was just like Jonah. I ran and I ran and I ran away from him. And finally, one day, he got a hold of me. So first of all, he rebelled as many of us have already. Second of all, he flat said, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to do it. Have you ever been there? Have you ever done that? I want you to listen to this teaching very carefully. Have you ever said, no, God, I'm not good enough? No, God, I can't do that? No, God, I'm not going to go over there to that where you have asked me to go? because I feel like I am inadequate. I feel like I'm a person that cannot do what you have called me to do. No, God, I'm not going to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, go to Joppa. <laughs> okay? 
you know, Brenda, I don't want to <coughs> take time, but God told me to do something one time. I was just a young girl. Just, I don't even think I was 16 yet. And Mrs. Denham came to yes. our church yes. out there where my dad had. And the Lord spoke to me to go to her because she was away from God. And I told him, no, Lord, I've seen her almost slap people. And if I go back there, she's going to slap me <laughs> if I ask her anything. And the Lord told me again to go. And I told him, no, God, I can't. I'm too afraid of her. And I said, but Lord, if it's really you, you turn me around and you pick these legs up and you make them walk back there. And I did, and she beat me to the altar. <laughs> but, you know, we're frightened. Yes, there's yeah. fear. There's fear. It could be fear because Jonah back then, the prophets were being killed. Yeah. Okay, so fear comes in to a lot of places where God wants us to go. So first of all, he rebelled, he said no, and he went to Tarshish instead of going to Nineveh where he was supposed to go because he was running away from God because he just flat up did not want to go there. Now why did he not want to go? Who can tell me? Let's see if you've read Jonah in a while. Why did he not want to go to to Nineveh? Because a lot of those people were so mean, and they killed, and they <coughs> was hostile, and they were just really mean people. So that people. number one could be fear. Mm -hmm. He was afraid to go. What's another reason? <coughs> he wasn't. He felt he wasn't good enough to. Mm, could have been, but I don't know. He was a prophet, so oh, I don't know. Okay. I think I think another reason would be that he um, didn't was know mad it. because God asked him to go to a place that was filled with sin. Mm -hmm. And Jonah didn't want to do that. Well, he, he's like, why should I go there? They might kill me. <laughs> you know, Fear, yeah. They might kill me if I try to preach the, the gospel to them. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, they might stop. They might do whatever. I don't know, God, I don't know. And besides that, Lord, this place is full of sin. Why should I go? It could be some kind of pride in him. I'm better. You're going to put me in this place of sinful people? Because look at me, I serve you. Okay, so we need to be really careful about how we do things and how we say things. I'm not saying that's what Jonah thought. I'm just saying that's some ideas that I had. I'm better. I'm better than that. Why would I go to a place that's full of sin when I am full of the Holy Spirit, and I am serving you, and here you are, God, sending me over to this place that's full of sin, and they might kill me, and they might stone me, and they might hang me. Who knows what they're going to do? Well, in the commentary, it says that no prophet had ever been sent to such a place because he was sending him, he was an Israelite. Yes. He was sending him into the Gentiles. Yes. Mm -hmm. And no prophet had ever been sent in there. So he probably was afraid. He was mm -hmm. afraid. You know? And I think that's with us. We're not sure sometimes if it's really God yeah. telling us to do something. Yes. Or are we doing it just because we want to do it or it's that's on right. our own. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure it's God. <laughs> and if it is God, then we're still going to be afraid. <coughs> right even if it is God we but gotta be uh, uh, ridicule what, what people think mm -hmm. you know sometimes that keeps us from doing we're afraid what people think uh -huh. and even your own family you know that's sometimes the hardest you know uh -huh. because everybody has their own opinions of right. everything right so it's not always easy I mean it's easy to be a Christian but but sometimes <laughs> doing what we have to do it, it can be, you know, because it can it be takes scary at times. It, it really, we're not out in that world where other people are. Like no. we're not in another another country. No. So we're pretty free. Oh, we have been, but the way things are changing now, you know, I don't know what's going to happen in the future. But we're pretty free to go out and speak to people about Jesus Christ right now. While we have that opportunity, we need to do that when the opportunity arises for you. Mm -hmm. And you know, another thing here in my notes, I'm gonna go here. So first of all, he rebelled. He said, no, God, I'm not gonna go. And he went in the opposite direction. He went to Tarshish. Well, 
And then we just said some reasons why maybe he didn't go. So I want you to remember this. The devil, Satan himself, will always have a way to make you be disobedient. Okay. Always. Because we're talking about <coughs> disobedience today. We're talking about later on we're going to get into the obedience and we're going to get into grace and then we're going to get to a God that is a second, has a second chance, gives us a second chance. The devil will always have a way, whether it would be through fear, whether it would be through I'm not good enough, whether it would be uh, through saying, well, I don't, you know, how can I go, s I don't have those words. Yes. A, 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 fa a failure, fear of failure, you're yeah. going to uh, do it wrong. Yes. You know, you're going to, yeah, you're, you're, you're going to hurt God by the way you're doing it. Yes. You know, uh -huh. and yeah, because like a, a new Christian, when they start waiting into a backslider, they better be careful because that backslider may know more than they do. Yes. Even though yeah. they're not lit, that's the hardest ones because they right. know, but they they're know away the from God. Mm -hmm. So, and then <laughs> you got to right. let the Lord lead you because... <laughs> You know, uh, I think some of that is maybe pride, fear, pride, <coughs> fear, uh -huh. uh, what people think. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think we've all experienced we that. We all have. I mean, really. I have. In some degree. Yeah. Yes, I have. <laughs> but just to put an input here, mm -hmm. you are all made, um, what's the word I'm looking for? By the blood of Jesus Christ, you are all worthy. Right. You are all worthy of what God has called you to do mm -hmm. through His blood. Mm -hmm. Yes, sister. Like Sister Ann was saying, if you come up against a backslider, most of them know the word. Yeah, they do. And when they backslide, they're just they're just full of the devil. Yeah. I have a family member right now that's been in church thirty some years. She's backslidden. And a family member told me, said, I said, well, I'm going to come and see you. He said, you better be careful. He was warning me about coming up against her because she's angry right now. And she doesn't want anything to do with anybody that has anything to do with the church. So he said, she's going to come out fighting. You know, so if... if if Jonah was coming up against people like that, you know, or you were sitting here right now and this place next door sometimes is full, full to the max. And you see all the alcohol and stuff over there just rolling. What if he spoke to you, said go out the door, go stand in the midst of those people and start talking to them about their wickedness about where they're going wrong, mm -hmm. about what's going on. Would you be willing to do it, or would you maybe <laughs> head right. toward Das Palace? Right. 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 That's exactly right. right. And You're that's right. a very but good example. But that's the predicament yeah. that God was putting him in. That's yeah. right. Jonah didn't know what he was facing over there. He didn't know. <clears throat> so there was fear. And even though Jonah was a man of God, and I believe he was, mm -hmm. and he believed that God would be with him, and we're like that. We know God is with us, but mm -hmm. we still have that fear of something. Yes. I was talking to someone yesterday, um, and I was real pleased to hear this. Um, they had said that there was something going on here at church, and God had moved them to do something. And that is out of the comfort zone, I believe, of this one person. Mm -hmm. But she obeyed God, right. and she did that person did what God asked her to do. The okay. Word of God says uh, uh, obedience is better than sacrifice. Right. Yes. Right. So you can sacrifice all you want to. You can sacrifice your food, you can sacrifice whatever you want to, call it a sacrifice, whatever you want to, but if we're not obedient to God, then there will be no blessings in our life. I can give you scripture for that. Yeah. And I'm going to later on. I don't know if I'm going to do it right now or later on. Anyway, so we have to be aware that the devil will try to do anything he can to keep us from doing what God wants us to do. I've heard good, good news this morning. 
the way the Holy Spirit has moved here in our church. And I didn't know a thing about it, and that's the way it should be. Mm -hmm. The person that was blessed <clears throat> was speaking about it, and God did a miraculous thing. Mm -hmm. See, we overlook those things, but God did something wonderful because of obedience. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so we know that the devil can will give us excuses in our head. I don't have time. I don't have the money. I can't do this. I don't know what those people are going to be like. They might go over here and chop my head off. They may do this. They may do that. That person might think I'm stupid. Or, and that is a big thing right there. Mm -hmm. That person's going to think I'm stupid. Mm -hmm. But how can you say that stupid mm -hmm. when we know where we're going? But yet the devil will put that in your head. They're going to think I'm stupid for telling them this. Mm -hmm. Well, they're not going to believe it unless we speak it. The Holy Spirit works on them, and they begin to wonder about it, and they begin to maybe come to church, they begin to read their Bible, and they begin to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Then that person that thinks you're stupid could go on and, and say, No, that, wasn't, that was God. That was God. You it's know what miracle. people say? They say, Judge, you know, if you try to... They'll, they'll say, don't judge me. Yes. That's what people will say. Who that are you to judge? Yeah. And we're not to judge. We're to witness, mm -hmm. you know, and tell them what we know. But, you know, but we have to do it in love because you don't do it in love. You come like that. Gonna people run. are going to rear up. <laughs> right. They're not going to like And right. nobody wants somebody coming at you strong. No. No. We don't. Even no. as Christians, you know, we, no. we want it with love. And but, what I hate is... Um, well, you're going through this because you did this, or because you did that, or because you did this. Well, there's different kinds of storms in our life. Oh, yeah. There's a storm of, uh, I have it here in my notes. I don't really want to get into that too much today, but yeah. um, there's um, there's a protecting storm. This is mm -hmm. what the Holy Spirit has spoken to me. There's a perfecting storm, and there's a correcting storm. And... Um, I'm not going to get into that, but I want you to know that we all go through those storms to correct, protect, or whatever. God's going to do it to us. Yes. But you know, we don't all see everything just alike either. So we have to be very careful. No. You know, if we tell somebody something, we better make sure it's the Lord because they could turn around and point out our faults. <laughs> they see any other than I, us. I don't think God mm -hmm. wants us to point out faults in people. Not faults. No, I don't think so. I think God wants us to pray. I think that we are are supposed to hate the sin, but we love that person. Amen. Therefore, if you love that person, you're going to do all you can Amen. not to hurt them. Amen. Is that right? I agree. Right. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Okay. Usually just give so, them your testimony of what all God has done good for you uh -huh. and, and when you end the conversation, we'd love to have you to visit it. Amen. We would like, you yeah. know, yeah. and then God will work it all. We can't you have to have a balance there. Um, you have to know when and where to shut up. Because if you go on and on and on and on, that's going to turn people off. That's right. It really will. So when we walk in the Holy Spirit, which all of us are walking in the Spirit of God, there should be a gentleness. There should be a love emitting from you. And the anger that we're trying to control God is in control of that too. Yes. Yeah. So, okay, let's get back to Jonah. Okay, so the devil always have a way to make you disobedient. Okay, example, in the garden. What happened in the garden? Uh, Adam and Eve. Who can tell me? So they disobeyed. They, 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 they didn't listen to God. They disobeyed. They disobeyed. What? And who was it that spoke to them? Satan. Satan. And what did he say? In a nice, gentle That's what I'm going to hurt you. I'm going to give you something to kill. Let's read that scripture. <laughs> Let's read it. Let's go there. In Exodus. I didn't write that down, but I'm sure it'll be, I mean Genesis, it'll be easy to find. Uh, Abel. It's interesting to me about this one here. Okay, Genesis 3 talks about the fall of man. 
Well, let me read what God is saying in here. Now the serpent, three and one, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field at which the Lord God had made. Okay, we all know God made everything. There's not one thing in this world that God didn't make, okay? Good enemies. Yes. <coughs> the word subtle, I'm reading in, in the commentary here. The word subtle as used here is not negative because everything that God did was positive in the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. So, but rather positive. Everything that God made before the fall was positive. It describes qualities such as a quickness of sight, okay? a swiftness of motion, activity of self-preservation, and seemingly intelligent adaptation to its surroundings. So we're starting to hear this word subtle with the, with the serpent was quick to know and see what was going on, okay? So he heard what God had said. Okay, we're going to hear that on down here in these scriptures. And he said unto the woman, uh, the serpent, we're talking about the serpent right now, and he said unto the woman, Yes, has God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. Let me tell you this, God, for God knows that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as God. gods. That is a lie from the enemy. You know what? I'm going to stop right there. There are televangelists that say we are gods, little gods. You yes. don't believe me? You watch that. You watch it. We're not gods of any kind. The Bible in the New Testament calls us saints. Right. We're That's saints right. of God. Saints of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. So anyway, it says, For God know, does know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, she looked at it. Ooh, that it looks good. good to me. You know, mm -hmm. our eyes. We sing that. We used to sing that little song in church. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. For the Father up above is looking down in love. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. Okay, so here we go. Okay, we can get off with that, but I don't want to. I want to. I want to go here. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eye and a tree to be desired to make one wise. wise. To make one smart. Too many people want that. So she took of the fruit and therefore did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. Okay, there we're showing you right there the disobedience that we can do and we don't even know it. Okay, so when in the beginning, when they were in the garden, I'm not going to get off Jonah, don't worry. When they were in the garden, their first, they liked to walk with God. It said they walked with him in the cool of the evening and they talked with him and they conversed with him and they were like buddies. You read on down in the scripture after they had sinned, they went and they hid. Covered yourself in the <clears throat> Yes. And God said, where are you? What are you doing? And they said, and he said, did you? He said, uh, we're naked and, and we were afraid or something like that. I can't remember exactly. It's all right there. You can read it. And God said, did you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Mm -hmm. Now let's go on down. And Adam said, Hmm. The woman you gave me. <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> the woman you gave me, gave me this fruit. So she, then it went on down to sit the woman. And the woman said, this is blaming God. I can see this kind of blaming God. The serpent betrayed me. 
the serpent that you made betrayed me. So we have to be very careful. Yes. That old serpent, that devil can betray us. He can make us um, look at things that are so beautiful and make us um, be disobedient with the Lord Jesus Christ. Yep. We want to check ourselves, make sure we're not. Man, mm -hmm. I think I think I love reading that. I, I think that is so so neat. Okay, so the devil will always make you try to be um, disobedient. But God said to go ahead and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it. Their wickedness has come up before me. And he chose not to obey God. And we're going to go to a few scriptures here. For the first scripture is going to be 1 Samuel 15 and 22. I want you to go there and read that. Do you have it, Sister Judy? 15 and 22, yeah. and Samuel said, He has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice right and to hearken than the fat of the rams. That's what I wanted to hear. Uh, what, what was that? First Samuel 15 to 22. It says, to obey is better than sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to Jeremiah 7.23. 17.23? No, 7. Oh, 7. 7. But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God. Right there. And you shall be my people. Mm -hmm. And walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. Okay. What's that telling you? What's that telling you guys? Seven one. We obey the Lord Jesus Christ and things are going to be great. That's yes. right. Amen. So we're going to see later on as Jonah um, travel, does his little journey. Gets in a boat and you know the, tea, the sea is all wavy and scary. We're going to see what happens when he disobeyed God. I want you to remember those two scriptures I've given you mm -hmm. about obeying the Lord Jesus and what will happen if we obey Him. It does not say, okay, I'm going to get into this really quick. It does not say, if you send me $5,000, I will bless you. <laughs> no. It does not say no, that. No, it doesn't say that. It says, if you will obey me, I obey will God. Okay, that's just a little thing I want to throw in there. Amen? Okay, I'm done for the day. I want you to read Jonah, and next week I want you to give me some input and in how you feel about uh, Jonah and what his experience was, and if you've had experiences about things that's been happening in your life, okay?